Well, you know what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this? Who? Jack Burton. Me. Big Trouble in Little China was released in 1986 and was a huge flop at the US box office despite receiving great feedback from screen tests and advanced previews. What affected the film's success was 20th Century Fox's inability to advertise it. The studio's policy at the time was to only allocate $3 million to its advertising budget for each new film for its weekend release period. The trailers showcased Kurt Russell as the main hero of the film which after viewing it, you realise Dennis Dunn is actually the main hero of the movie. Having a Chinese actor as the main star in Hollywood films is still a rare occurrence. The film cost around 20 to 25 million dollars and recouped back only 11 million. Carpenter was frustrated with the studio and was getting sick of the Hollywood system. After this movie, he returned to independent filmmaking due to the studio interference and didn't get involved with the big studios until the early 90s. The first version of the screenplay was written by first-time screenwriters Gary Goldman and David Weinstein. Goldman had been inspired by a new wave of martial art films that had all sorts of weird action and special effects shot against an oriental background. They had originally written a western set in the 1880s with Jack Burton as a cowboy who rides into town. Goldman and Weinstein envisioned combining Chinese fantasy elements with the western style. They submitted the script to producers Paul Monash and Keith Barish during the summer of 1982. Monash brought their script and had them do at least one rewrite, but still did not like the results. The problems came largely from the fact that it was set in the turn of the century San Francisco, which affected everything from style, dialogue and action. Goldman rejected a request by 20th Century Fox for a rewrite that asked for major alterations. He was angered when the studio wanted him to update it to a contemporary setting. The studio then removed the writers from the project, however they still wanted credit for their contributions. The studio brought in screenwriter W.D. Richter, a veteran script doctor and director of the cult film The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, to extensively rewrite the script as he felt that the Wild West and fantasy elements didn't work together. The screenwriter modernised everything, almost everything in the original script was discarded except for Low Pan's story. Richter realised that what he needed wasn't a rewrite but a complete overhaul. He wrote his own draft within 10 weeks. Fox wanted to deny Goldman and Weinstein writing credits and eliminated their names from press releases. They wanted only Richter to have credit. In March 1986, the Writers Guild of America determined that Richter would not receive credit for his work on the script and it would go instead to Goldman and Weinstein, based on the WGA screenwriting credit system, which protects original writers. Director John Carpenter was disappointed that Richter did not get a proper screenwriting credit on the movie because of the ruling. Carpenter made his own additions to Richter's rewrites, which included strengthening the Gracie Law role and linking her to Chinatown, removing a few action scenes due to budget reasons and eliminating material deemed too offensive to Chinese Americans. Problems began to arise when Carpenter learned that the next Eddie Murphy vehicle, a golden child featuring a similar theme, was going to be released around the same time as Big Trouble in Little China. As it happened, Carpenter was also asked by Paramount's Pictures to direct The Golden Child. He remarked in an interview how many adventure pictures dealing with Chinese mysticism had been released by the major studios in the past 20 years. For two of them to come along at exactly the same time is more than a mere coincidence. To beat the rival production at being released in theatres, Big Trouble went into production in October 1985, so it could open in July 1986, five months before The Golden Child's Christmas release. The casting in the film is spot on. Kurt Russell is a frequent collaborator with Carpenter. 
Kurt had only really had success with Escape from New York. Many of his films during the 80s had limited success or were flops. Kurt Russell discusses some of his work during the 80s in an interview with Graham Norton. Going through your movie choices, you've been in loads of kind of movies that people, you know, they come out with success, but people still love, you know, sort of those sort of cult classics. Yeah, it's been an interesting career for me in that regard. I've done a lot of movies that when they first came out, they may have been mildly successful or bombs, and they became cult movies. I think the most significant of them for me would be a picture called uh, Big Trouble in Little China, which I did with John Carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> That was just a, I think that movie was out for, I think it was literally out in the theaters for three days before they pulled it at the time. Really? Uh, it was just a massive bomb. And it's, it's just become this, this cult movie that people uh, really uh, latch on to. Kurt Russell's character is played for laughs, and he is the sort of guy who thinks he's the leading man, but he's far too clumsy and arrogant to be one. According to John Carpenter, the studio didn't understand the film and the character of Jack Burton. So we had to shoot a prologue to start off the movie, explaining more of Kurt Russell's character. During the movie, you notice that Jack Burton has some great subtle comedy moments in the film, which you can see here. Two, I said I was coming. I go with you, but... I know, there's a problem with your face. Whoa. Huh? Wait a minute. Hey! Son of a bitch must pay. What? Yeah! Where'd you get that? Don't give up, Jack. Oh, okay, I won't, Wang. Let's just chew our way out of here. First time you ever plugged somebody? Of course not. Follow the leader. One, two, three. He lives here? He owns the whole block. He's a very rich guy. Rich? This place is a dump, Wang. Hollow? Hollow. Fuck it. <laughs> But he's... he's got a crush on you. You mean like you've got on Gracie? Are you kidding? I just want to get my truck back. Oh, yeah, what do I know? She's not even your type, all brains. Hey, come on, let's go! It's all in the reflexes. Kim Cattrall is very enjoyable in the film, and everyone obviously knows her as Samantha from Sex in the City. But I remember her from this film, and Mannequin. The delivery of her lines in the movie are a little hammy in places and cheesy, but she is great at the comedic scenes and is pretty hot, as always. The star of the film is Dennis Dunn. The actor has no prior martial arts training and only studied Chinese opera back in the day, but manages to pull off a very convincing performance. He does a fantastic job with the role and is the hero of the piece. He must have impressed John Carpenter because he cast him in the next film, Prince of Darkness. The soundtrack to the feature, composed by the director John Carpenter, provides an Asian style mix with synth and rock and roll. At the time, this was Carpenter's biggest piece of work. He had already composed scores to these previous features, such as Halloween and The Fog. This is regarded as one of his best soundtracks and was given a limited two disc edition a couple of years ago and is worth tracking down. The film did have a music video produced. It has John Carpenter, Nick Castle, and Tom Lee Wallace in the video. And as you can see, it's very cheesy. Richard Edlund, who had left George Lucas's effects team ILM and branched out to start his own business, had provided some incredible work on Ghostbusters, was brought on board to supply a mix of many different styles of effects, from rotoscoping to creature effects. He was only given a small budget of around $2 million. For a very modest budget, his team pulled off some incredible work. John Carpenter was supposedly unhappy with some of the effects in the film, but Richard Edlund said this and Ghostbusters was probably some of his best work at the time. I personally see no faults with his work in this movie. The optical work is beautifully done, which I imagine he used VistaVision or 65mm film cameras to achieve this style. He uses a very similar effect in the He-Man movie.
I personally think this is a fantastic movie that provides entertainment for everyone. The film has comedy, action, martial arts and supernatural fantasy elements all thrown into one. It has a huge cult following which is clearly understandable. The film was way ahead of its time considering the output of Hollywood films during this period. John Carpenter copies many of the techniques and ideas from Hong Kong cinema and brings these to the general public and does it in his usual classic style. The film had inspired many filmmakers over the last 20 years and video game makers as well. The creator of Mortal Kombat, Ed Boon, loved the idea of the Lightning God and used a similar design for his character Raiden. Character in uh, Big Trouble in Little China, this guy with a big hat and electricity and stuff and we were like, you know, we gotta make a character like that and that's where Raiden was born. Many directors today, like McGee and Michael Bay, seem to struggle telling the story and seem only interested in filling the frame with enough action but fail at the basics of storytelling. It's a basic skill that many new directors fail to understand. You have to know how to tell a story with your camera setups and not just fill the frame with enough stuff or action and keep cutting and cutting to move the picture along to keep people interested. John Carpenter excels at telling stories and he does it the old school way and he keeps things simple when directing scenes to help the story unfold. He doesn't need flashy editing or multiple shots from different angles to keep you interested. John Carpenter's style may not interest younger audiences because he takes a very old school approach to his filmmaking. His films are very good methods to learn how to set up your shots and to build up tension, especially when it comes to creating horror. I've seen this film countless times and it never gets boring. If you haven't seen it, go buy it now. You won't be disappointed. It's one of a kind. I mean, what you're saying is this David Lopin, what, what is he, a, a ghost? He plays at being a man, a creature of vast, dark, destructive power. Tell me what is going on. Look out, guys! It's all in the reflexes.